Hey, this is Greg Young, and I'm here to just give you a really quick demo of Mighty Moose. So, Mighty Moose is a continuous test runner that's out from continuous tests. What a continuous test runner does is it'll basically run your tests for you, either as you save or as you type inside of your IDE. The general idea being that you never manually run tests ever again. You can think of it kind of like an IntelliSense for your unit tests. Now, as you can see down here on the bottom, we have our continuous test window. This is our main feedback center. So if I were just to jump in and I were to start dropping in some code, let's say we were to type in index equals five. Right now I've got Mighty Moose running in save mode. So when I would hit control shift S, you'll notice that it went into building, locating effective tests and testing. You can see that four tests were run here. And overall, this solution has about 370 tests inside of it. One of the nice things about Mighty Moose is it's capable of figuring out which tests actually need to be run based on the code that you're changing as you come through and type it. Now, there's a lot of other ways we can look at this kind of information. As an example, a common question would be, how do I know which four tests those actually are? If I were to come in here and I hit a control shift Y G, I can actually get a graph here and I can look at how my code is actually coupled at a static level. This right now is again, only showing my static coupling. Mighty Moose uses both static and dynamic couplings in order to figure out which tests to run. Now, if I move my cursor over here and I hit enter, it will navigate me to that spot in code. I can see here that this is an N unit test because next to the then it shows up a little N unit icon. When I'm inside of a unit test, I could hit control shift Y S and it will actually bring me up a sequence diagram of what's inside of this given test and what messages are being passed between what objects. If I wanted to, I could either double click or start typing the name of a given class and it will actually drop me over and into that particular code. If I were to do a control shift Y G again, I can switch back over to the place where I started in code. Now, if I were to grab, let's say this test, and I were to bring it up here and copy and paste, adding a little bit, you'll notice that it turned into a question mark here on the side. That means that it is currently in a transient state and we're not actually sure what it is. This test will also cover this method up here with a four next to it. And we'll talk about what that four means in just a moment. But when I save it, we'll see that it becomes an end unit test. And then afterwards, within a few seconds, we'll see that the four turns into a five. What that five actually represents is the code coverage of this method at runtime. Um, this is not actually a static metric. This is actually a dynamic metric showing you real code coverage. If I were to come through and delete this, when I save, that will actually turn back into a four, as it just did. Now you'll notice that around this, the circle is green. What that actually represents is a risk metric that we run across the graph associated with this piece of code. In this particular case, it's green, which means that we feel rather comfortable with you being able to go through and make changes in this. And any bugs that you might be introducing would likely be caught by a test associated with it. So if I were to drop in a throw new exception, we'll see that now I've got a bunch of broken tests. There's other options for this. It might come up yellow, which means you should uh, look around, or it might come up as red, which means that we're really not sure that you should be changing this code without further research. Now, at the bottom here, I've got a bunch of failed tests. If I do a quick control shift J, which always toggles the continuous test status window, I can move up and down through these. And if I were to hit an I, this will actually give me the actual test output, including the duration and any possible stack trace that's associated with it. If I were to come through here and hit D, it's just going to fire me right up in the debugger. And when it fires me up in the debugger, it's going to do it and set a breakpoint for me. So I hope you enjoyed this really quick demo of Mighty Moose. This is not necessarily a deep dive. If you want to get a deep dive, you should come to our website, which is continuoustest.com. And there's another video up there, which is entitled Getting Started. 
Getting started will go through a lot of the same material, but it will go through it in a much deeper fashion and show you, for instance, a lot of different configuration settings and how you can change things in terms of how you can work with Mighty Moose. Thanks a lot.